So I would like to now talk about the control or regulation of nuclear import process. Let's talk about that. The activity of some gene regulatory proteins is controlled by keeping them out of the nucleus, nuclear compartment until they are needed. We talked about this when we were talking about signaling. When cells receive a signal, the signaling cascade sometimes activates gene regulatory protein which binds the DNA at specific location and it recruits RNA polymerase resulting in transcription and subsequently translation. Unless and until the cell receives a signal, the, the protein or the gene regulatory protein is kept in the cytoplasm. It is not allowed to enter the nucleus. So in many cases, this control depends upon the regulation of nuclear localization and export signals, which can be turned off and on, for example, by phosphorylation, or it can also have a system to sequester the protein the gene regulatory protein can be sequestered by other molecules which do not permit it to enter the nucleus. And also in the process, one of the ways they could do it is by masking the NLS unless and until that NLS is exposed, these gene regulatory proteins cannot enter the nucleus. Let's look at one example, practical example of this. NFAT, nuclear factor for activating T cells. This is present in the cytoplasm in inactive form when if the T cell has not received a signal to become active and we have talked about those signals one of them is interaction of TCR T cell receptor with MHC2 molecule in case of helper T cells which is bound to a foreign peptide and also second signal coming from B7 and CD28. Once those signals have been received, it results in increase of calcium level in the cell, which is calcium, as you know, is stored in the endoplasmic reticulum. When calcium levels go up, a protein called calcineurin is activated. It is a phosphatase. It basically works on the NFAT, and it is since it is a phosphate, it will cleave off these phosphate groups from NFAT. So when that happens, the nuclear import signal basically is exposed. In inactive form, NFAT is phosphorylated. Once the activation signal has been received, it becomes dephosphorylated by the action of this protein, calcineurin. This basically, when nuclear import signal is exposed, this allows this NFAT to be imported in the nucleus where it will result in activation of gene transcription which will ultimately result in activation of that particular T cell. Once the T cell has been activated or it, we want to now deactivate the T cell, basically the cell lowers the calcium concentration which makes this phosphatase inactive and when this phosphatase become inactive, our NFAT becomes again phosphorylated and it exposes the nuclear export signal which allows this protein to be kicked out of the nucleus. So this is basically how the regulation of a protein is a classic example which has both the export and the import signals and both of them are regulated unless and until they are needed, they are hidden and when they are needed they are exposed using other members of the cellular machinery. Now let's talk about what happens during the cell division because a nuclear envelope falls apart and once the nuclear envelope falls apart and after the cell the chromosomes have separated it reforms when it reforms why doesn't it include all the proteins which are present in the cytoplasm so here it how it works basically when the during the prophase we know cdks become activated because cyclins are produced which allow the phosphorylation of lamins, a nuclear lamina is basically phosphorylated, the, this which is basically the scaffold for the nucleus and in phosphorylated form, lamins basically uh, fall apart and nuclear, nuclear envelope basically uh, disintegrates. In early telophase, the nuclear membrane, components of nuclear membrane, they start to assemble right along, right around the chromosome excluding all the proteins 
so we know these lemons they have tendency to bind dna once the cell reaches early telophase the lemons are now dephosphorylated in dephosphorylated form they can bind the chromosomes and when they bind the chromosomes they are basically pasted all along the chromosomes in a very tight manner lemons then also recruit the membrane the nuclear membrane and basically we have individual chromosomes which are wrapped around with first of all with lemons and then lemons are basically have brought in or they they are sticking to the nuclear membrane these structures then fuse together and they again form the normal nucleus and the normal nucleus has nuclear pores as we know and now once the nucleus has been formed only those proteins that are required by the nucleus will be allowed to enter the nucleus and which are proteins which are not required by the nucleus they won't be allowed to enter so this is how basically a cell which has gone through cell division keeps the cytoplasmic random cytoplasmic proteins out of the nucleus so we have seen two beautiful examples of how the signaling system the the signaling nls basically is regulated and how proteins are kept out of the uh, the nucleus which are not supposed to be there and how proteins enter the nucleus when they are required